Welcome everyone tonight to TMG Singles on TMG Trivia Only. I hope mm-hmm. everyone is having a great night. And we have two awesome com- awesome competitors coming in and making their singles debuts here in TMG Trivia. So I have with me tonight, thank goodness, uh, the champ himself coming to see what the new blood looks like, Ryan Payne. How are you, man? Doing very well, Kevin. Uh, I gotta admit, these watching some of these matches, like in singles, you know, it's been pretty good. Like scouting the competition. I mean, I'm glad that we're getting some new blood here, new challengers, just just a bunch of new faces here, and I'm very excited to see where this match is going to take us. Absolutely. And these two guys, I know, hope at least uh, it carries them to a championship match against you. Uh, that's the way we're doing it, guys. We're getting, uh, I think it's the first two people to get three wins are going to get uh, a number one competitor's match. Uh, mm-hmm. So you definitely want to go ahead and get a win as quickly as possible. Let's go to our competitors. We have first Chris, the Lone Wolf, Diaz. How are you, man? Drink. opponent to play again, and this did be a fun one. All right. Looks like Chris is a little laggy, but that's okay. We will work through it. Uh, making his CMG singles debut as well. He has already made his debut, I hope, by now on TMG Teams, and you have seen him all uh, make one of the uh, definite uh, moments of the year. A. A. Ron, Aaron Canole, how are you, man? I'm good. Uh, I decided after God knows how many years of being around to actually buy a fucking whiteboard. So let's see how this goes. Uh, Yeah. You know, last time I played a team's match, if you've seen it, uh, then, you know, my biggest defeat was not understanding the question. Uh, And let's understand questions and get them right. All right. That is the the easiest way to end. So we will take you through some rules. I'm going to mute Chris there for just a minute. Uh, In round one, you'll get 10 questions alternating between Ryan and myself. Uh, They can be from any category in the movie universe. Uh, Almost said IG universe. That shows you where my mind is normally at. Uh, But we will give you the category before. You'll get 15 seconds there roundabouts. Uh, to write it down on Aaron said he has a fresh new whiteboard. It looks like Chris also has a whiteboard. So that's awesome. Uh, Use your whiteboards um, and get the spelling as close as possible. Same with the pronunciation. We'll ask you individually to show those to us. Uh, You have three repeats and a challenge, uh, both of you to use throughout the match. Do you have any questions before we get started, Aaron? No, let's play. All right. And Diaz. I am good. I'm ready to go. All right, and Ryan, if you want to take it away, question one. Yeah, no problem. I will definitely do that. All right, gentlemen, your first question in this round is in the category of crime movies. Crime. Sorry, crime, not cry. It's crime. (laughs) And here's the question. What is Harlan Thrombey's profession prior to passing away in Knives Out? Oh, prior to his passing, sorry. <laughs> My mouse was over the word. <laughs> <laughs> same same thing. No yeah. Uh, yeah, not much you can say here, but uh, I love this movie. Let's go I, I love this movie, and I will give you everything I have to say in five, <laughs> four, three, two, and one. We'll go to Aaron first. Uh, he was a novel writer, author, whatever the word is, yeah. Chris. He might put a novel, but he might go about time. Can you bring the boy closer? He might book about he a novel, like he might book about crime. Right, books about crime. Okay. Well, we can we can accept that. It was a crime writer. That's right. Yeah, we can accept both. Yeah. <laughs> Thought right. about the word after I wrote it. I was like, what's it called? <laughs> <laughs> Author. No worries. Author. All right. Uh, excellent start. One to one. And we move along to category two, fantasy sci-fi. Your fantasy science fiction question is as follows. In Cloud Atlas, who plays Dermot Hoggins, the man who kills a critic for writing a mean review of his memoir? (laughs) 
What do you think about that Cloud Atlas? Sorry, I had to throw a family joke. Can't find family guy joke in there. All right, uh, the answers in five, four, three, two, one. Pins down, boards up. We'll start with Chris. Might be thinking of Ron Act if I feel good leaving. Aaron. I don't even know if he's in the movie, but I, Nathan Fillion? Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. Oh, it was Tom Hanks. Fuck me. Uh, you can Venmo me uh, some money, and we can have that discussion off screen. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Ryan, Ryan uh, can take away question three. Oh, with pleasure, guys. And we're going into your third category, which is directors. That's right directors and the question for what film was stanley kubrick what film gave what film did stanley kubrick get his first nomination for best director for best director kubrick had some good ones true i mean looking at his career you can see there are definitely there's kubrick movies and then there's just movies he directed yeah exactly Let's get our countdown in five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Aaron, let's go to you. Now I'm doubting myself. Spartacus? Diaz. Hey, I think it's like Spartacus. You are both incorrect. It is Dr. Strangelove. Oh, yeah. okay. Yes. That would be between Spartacus and um, Chad's one Space Odyssey, but. We got a lot. We got a lot of 2001 in uh, in testing, so I I definitely get you there. All right, moving on to category four, the 1980s. The 1980s. Which movie features the following characters from the 80s? I'm sorry. Let me start that over. Which 80s movie features the following characters? John Russell, Eva Lindstrom, and Eugene Carmichael. Be honest, that movie is pretty, pretty, pretty good. Uh, it is for sure. Uh, in five, four, three, two, one, pins down, boards up, and we'll start with Chris. The graduate, Aaron. Weird science, it is the changeling. The changeling, uh, yeah. All right, still one to one. Moving on to question five. All right. And let's go to question five, which is in the category of war. What is it good for? Making nothing but profits. Oh, sorry. That was my stand-up material. Let's get to your question. <laughs> what war does the Monuments Men take place during? Just for a little dramatic effect. There you go. Probably a movie that I have seen. <laughs> I mean, you can watch the trailer and you still know the answer to this, but we'll find your answers in five, four, three, two, and one. Aaron. World War II. Diaz. World War II. And you both got points. It is World War II or World War the sequel. World War the sequel. Yeah, uh, the fans of right. the first one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, moving on now to category number six. Your category is Robert De Niro. What is the full name of the character De Niro plays in The Irishman? Oh, like first and last name. Correct. <laughs> Irishman is just like, nope for me, but hey, some Man. people like it. It's taken, it took me a couple of times to get through it, but it, 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 oh, in the end, I'll give it uh, I'll give it some some love. A little bit of love. Yeah. Alright, definitely not a five-star film. Uh, five, four, three, two, one, pins down, and we'll start with Chris. I could have remembered the last name. I can't thank you, but I could have remembered his full name. Aaron. Uh, I put Frank Sheehan. 
Frank Sheehan is incorrect. It's Frank Sheeran. Frank Sheeran. Sheeran. Oh, fuck, I couldn't Very remember close. There was an R. Very close. Yep. That's right. Fuck. Yeah, who knew that Ed Sheeran had a relative who was in the mafia? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. Ed said. All right. All right, and Ryan. Yes, no problem. We will go to uh, question seven, and that question is in action adventure. Wesley Snipes plays Neil Shaw, a covert United Nations agent in what 2000s film? Neil Shaw. I don't know. The name doesn't feel like it pops to you. <laughs> no, it, it doesn't seem like a Wesley Snipes name. I, I agree with you there. I mean, it feels like a 90s name, not a 2000s name. It, that, that, yeah, true, true there. All right, but let's count down in five, four, Three, two, and one. Pens down, boards up. Aaron. I'm pretty sure I have the wrong year, but U.S. Marshals. Diaz. I thought I'm going to come to Buddy. I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> well, I'm going to spoil it for you. He's not an undercover brother, but Aaron gets the point. It is oh, U.S. Marshals. Oh, no, I'm right. sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. No. I have. No. I apologize. I'm sorry. I was just excited for I was thinking so much of the joke <laughs> that I let slip my mind. I apologize. The answer is the art of war. Yeah. Okay. Because I was I was very sure US Marshals was like ninety nine or ninety eight. So that's why I was like, ah, I don't know anything else though. Yeah, <laughs> you did get that part correct, I believe. That's uh, my all right. bad. I'm all right. I'm gonna be thinking of jokes instead of trying to host, but you know, <laughs> I'm getting into host mode now. So no more slip ups. You are all good, man. No worries. Moving into category eight, movie release dates. Everybody's favorite category. Movie release dates. Release date. All right. I know, all right? All right. What year saw the release of Practical Magic, Enemy of the State, and Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas? That would be a, uh, an interesting uh, trifecta to go see when, one day. Uh, pop all those onto your Amazon Prime list. I mean, all right, let's get answering. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Two, one, pins down, and we'll start with Chris. 1997. Aaron. I scribbled it out at the last second, but 1998, I think. 1998 Chris. is correct. Chris, get that bread ready and make sure you get a whole mustard on that sandwich. <laughs> that is right. So Aaron takes a three to two lead. Yes, but we are nearing the end, gentlemen, as we get to your penultimate question. And your penultimate question is in musicals. Yay. <laughs> okay. What country did the musical Les Miserables take place? You see, that's difficult. I can't tell. It's supposed to be Les, Les Miserables or Les Miserables. <laughs> Les Miserables. Les Miserables, but they just like forget the rest of all those letters. Like just, yeah. just fuck it, just forget it. <laughs> those extra syllables are just to mimic Russell Crowe singing. <laughs> I'll be honest. I saw a recent video of Russell Crowe singing with um, the actor, a, a Broadway actor who played Jean Valjean. When they're back and forth, it was pretty good. It was very good. It makes me realize that Russell Crowe just really wasn't treated well in that movie. But let me no. shut up and. Stop. Four, three, two, and one. Pens down. Aaron. France. Diaz. France, and you want to be more specific. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Gentlemen, make sure, that you're, make sure you have an all-expense-paid trip for you and your girlfriend because you are both correct. It's France. <laughs> all right. Passing it off for the last question in round number one. As always, it is... Plot synopsis. Plot synopsis. I'll give you a plot synopsis of the film. You give me the film. Here we go, guys. The spirits of a deceased couple are harassed by an unbearable family that has moved into their home and hire a malicious spirit to drive them out. Love. Uh, and we'll see if I get a repeat in five, four... Three, two, one. Looks like they have it. Let's see what Chris says. 
Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Don't and Aaron. Jesus. Beetlejuice. <laughs> it is Beetlejuice. Well, into the round, guys. So five to four. A very close match we have going on as we expected it to be. All right. Your round two is a simple round two. Right, we will have a wheel with eight slices plus your uh, sorry, to get this pulled up. Uh, plus your oh, it might be actually uh, it's ten slices plus your two uh, a spinner's and opponent's choice. Uh, and then you have put your strengths on the wheel. Uh, Chris, that being Harry Potter, no Fantastic Beast franchise. And Aaron, that being MCU, uh, we'll get each one of you will get two spins of the wheel unless you land on opponent's choice first. Yep. Um, and each question out of five questions will be worth two points unless you go to multiple choice, at which time it'll be worth one. So, Aaron, I can uh, go ahead and read you off the the wheel, and you can decide if you'd like to go first or second. Sure. Tonight we have tonight we have Harry Potter, No Fantastic Beasts, MCU, The Two Thousands, Christopher Nolan, Classics, Stoner Comedies, Taglines, Sports, and Spinners and Opponents Choice. Oh. Okay. I'll go first. All right, he's gonna spin first. Let's go ahead and prime spin the wheel. Go for it. Make sure it works. I know as soon as it hits Spinner's Choice, everybody's like, "Ah, oh, but, but wait a minute. All right. No funny business here. Here we go. First spin. Stoner comedies. <laughs> <laughs> See, the bigger ones I'd know, but the smaller ones are what I'm scared of. Uh, I'll go for it again. Okay, he's going to risk it. And take his second spin. Whatever this lands on, you will be stuck with. Looks like you're destined for stoner comedies tonight. Okay. Ryan, Ryan if you want to take those, uh, just in case we do land yeah. on the one I discussed before. Without a doubt, I will take those questions now. Let's All just... Right. Let's hope these won't be a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stoner comedies. Uh, are you ready? Absolutely. All right, your first question in stoner comedies. Who plays Red in Pineapple Express? Red. And answer five, four... Three. Craig Robinson. That is incorrect. Chris, you have the opportunity for a two-point steal. He did not go to multiple choice. So the question is, who plays red in Pineapple Express? Is it Danny McBride? That is correct for two-point steal. Danny McBride. Believe me. Aaron, I've been thinking the same thing, and then didn't my take it that would be me. Right, no, don't worry about it. <laughs> Just shake it off. Just shake it off, there, Aaron. And you. Here's your second question in stoner comedies. What television program does Al, do Alex Grandma and her roommates have an obsession with in Grandma's Boy? Ooh. Multiple choice. All right. Multiple choice options are A. Antiques Roadshow. B. The Price is Right, C, Golden Girls, or D, Days of Our Lives? I'm be in five. I'll go with four. The Price is Right. That is incorrect. Chris, you have another chance for a one-point steal, but let me give you your options again. A, Antiques Roadshow, B, The Price is Right, C, Golden Girls, or D, Days of Our Lives? Uh, I'm going with D, Golden Girl. Well, that is incorrect. The answer was Antiques Roadshow. Antiques yeah. Roadshow. Yeah. 
But that's okay, gentlemen. Stoner comedies, you either know them or you need to get high to remember them. But let's get to your third question. Here's your third question. In Friday, Big Worm threatens to kill Craig and Smokey if they don't give him how much money by 10 p.m.? Uh, multiple choice. All right. Your multiple your multiple choice options are A, one hundred dollars, B, one hundred and fifty, two, I mean C, wow, C, two hundred dollars, D, three hundred dollars. So once again it was one hundred, one fifty, two hundred, or three hundred. I'm gonna go with C two hundred. And that is correct for one point. Gaining his first point in the second round. And he is almost back there. Up. Yep. Really? No, I think I see my head. Oh, yeah. Tied it back up. Yep. Yeah. All right. Sorry, I'm a little off here. I guess Sorry. I need to I need to hold back off on my cush. So let's get to our <laughs> penultimate question. In half bait, Kenny is on a munchie run and accidentally kills what kind of animal? By feeding it junk food. Feeding it junk food. And multiple choice. All right. Options are A, a dog, B, a cow, C, cat, or D, horse. Uh, I'll go with a dog. Chris, you have another chance for a one-point steal, and the options are the following. A, dog. B, cow. C, cat. Or D, horse. Cow? The correct answer is a horse, gentlemen. Buttercup. More specifically, a, 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 you know, a, race, a police horse. Yes, a policeman's horse. Yeah, that's how he gets arrested, because he killed a cop's horse. <laughs> Let's go Ooh, to your final, question. your final question in stoner comedies. In Dude, Where's My Car? What is the name of the leader of the UFO cult? Uh, multiple choice. All right. The multiple choice options are A, Zolt Zartan, B, Zuntan, <laughs> C, Zentan, or D, Zoltan. I just want to get a free repeat over those Zs. I was going to say, yeah. do you, can you just read the first one again? I, it cut out for me when you said the first one. That's the only reason I asked. Oh, I'll give you a free repeat on those then. Okay, the multiple choice options are A, Zartan, B, Zuntan, C, Zentan, or D, Zoltan? I'll go with C. C is incorrect. Chris, another opportunity to steal again. And the options are oh, <laughs> A, Zartan, B, Zuntan, C, Zentan, or D, Zoltan? D, Zoltan. And that is correct for another steal. For uh, once again, another steal taking the lead once again. I trusted my gut because we're thinking of these big jokes. Certainly, I go with something that sounds familiar. That's it. Uh, got it, uh, Zoltan. All right, and we will course, go back to the one at six. Yep. Four. All right, just making sure we're good. Everybody still has all their repeats and their challenges. And Chris, your first spin of the wheel is up and in. MCU. I think you have we spin because if I get someone damage, I take steal. So All right, see. going on strategy. It is Aaron's string, so he's spinning yeah. away. Whatever, whatever you land on, you will be stuck with. There we go.
Classics. Classics. Oh, nice. I will give those five questions to Chris. Uh, if you need to, check down to multiple choice. Um, and Aaron, be ready in case of a steal potential. All right. All right. Are you ready, uh, Chris? Yeah. Okay. Your first question in classics. What is Fran Kubelik's job at the building where Bud also works in the apartment? She is a elevator girl. She opens in the elevator. Hmm. That is correct. An elevator operator. Yeah. I just saw the movie for the first time this year. I loved it. Yeah. For two points. All right. Paid off there. All right. Question two in classics. What is the scarecrow on a mission to get from the wizard in The Wizard of Oz? A brain. That is correct. Two more points there. Question three. Who plays Maggie Prescott in 1957's Funny Face? Multiple choice. All right. Your multiple choice. Is it A, Susie Parker? B. K. Thompson, C. Audrey Hepburn, or D. Virginia Lee. Audrey Hepburn. That is incorrect, Aaron. For a one-point steal, who played Maggie Prescott in 1957's Funny Face? Is it A. Susie Parker, B. K. Thompson, C. Audrey Hepburn, or D. Virginia Lee? Virginia Lee. That is also incorrect. We're looking for Kay Thompson. Kay Thompson. I had a hard time because I remember the post. I just could have picked the answer. All right. So one stumble there by Chris, but you we'll see if we can pick it back up. Okay. Take it off. Keep going. And, <laughs> yep. And uh, he can definitely pick it back up in his penultimate question in round two in classics. How many Oscars did Lawrence of Arabia win at the 35th Academy Awards in 1963? Multiple choice. Anything Oscars, that's like the multiple choice. All right. Multiple choice it is. Is it A, 7, B, 8, C, 9, or D, 10? 7. 7 is correct for one point. Chris move, maneuvering his way well through this round. And the, your final question in classics. Who directed 1942's Casablanca? Ooh. Should know this name. There you go, multiple choice, because should know this name. And I just saw the Netflix movie this year. That it would come out okay. and get the All right, multiple choice it is. Is it A, Orson Welles, B, Billy Wilder? C. William Wyler or D. Michael Curtiz? Michael Curtiz. It is Michael Curtiz for one more point. Uh -huh. I just saw the that Netflix and movie. I just remember your first so name. <laughs> well, Alright, so a 13 right. to 6 lead. Uh -huh. Right. A 13 to 6 lead. Chris takes into round three. And round three works pretty similarly to the Schmodown. It is a two, three, and five-point round, uh, up to ten potential points. Uh, if you'll give me your numbers in the order that you would like them, between one and fifteen. Uh, I'm sorry, one and sixteen. Um, and Chris, since you have the lead at the moment, you can give me your three numbers first, one to sixteen. Five. Nine and two. Okay. Five, nine, and two. And Aaron, your three numbers between one and 16 that are not five, nine, or two? Ten, one, and eight. Ten, one, and eight. And we'll switch it up, Ryan. I'll take Aaron's uh, to start off. All right. And you can give Chris's. Uh, all right, so we'll start off with Aaron. You're down by seven points, so you definitely need to uh, hit your five, and either your two or three will send it back over to Chris. So your two-point question is in 
No, you selected number 10. That is in the category of Oscars. So your two-pointer is this. What film released in 2016 won the Academy Award for Best Picture at that ceremony? Moonlight. Moonlight is correct for two points. All right. So now it comes down to this. Uh, your three-pointer, uh, you can get it, and hopefully I tack on some more points. All right. It is in – question. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Number you selected number one. That is in the realm of sci-fi fantasy, sci-fi fantasy. Your three-pointer, who plays Professor Albright, who informs Damien about the shedding procedure in Selfless? Ben Kingsley. That is incorrect. The correct answer is Matthew Good. Matthew Good. Sorry, I lost my document there for a second. All right, going to need to hit this five-pointer to send it back over to Chris. So it comes down to this. You selected number eight. That is the realm of classics. Classics. Your five-pointer. What is the name of the legendary pool player that Fast Eddie and Charlie travel across the country to challenge in The Hustler? Mm. You do have three repeats. Uh, repeat the question. Okay. What is the name... In, uh, I'm sorry, five... Your five-point question in classics. What is the name of the legendary pool player that Fast Eddie and Charlie travel across country to challenge in The Hustler? Uh, I don't know. The Shark? That is incorrect. And your winner by TKO... Chris Diaz. The correct answer is Minnesota Fats. Minnesota Fats. That was a tough one for sure. You picked a rogue gallery to go to try to run through over there, Aaron, for sure. Uh, all right, let's start off. Let's give Aaron a minute, and we will start with Chris, our winner for the evening. How are you feeling, Chris? I feel well. I am back. This is, I was hoping you could win a bench with TNT. This made me happy. I just feel so happy. And like, it's a tough question. Like, I, even I would never to see what my two, three, and five point was going to be. It's just like, I did a great job. Nothing he had to, you know, he, we faced eventually again in the future. I think next time would be more interesting. And I look forward to making more progress and as we go along. Absolutely. Absolutely. As a one and zero player, is anybody you'd like to call out or uh, see next on your on the road to the to the uh, to the title? Anybody? I really face anybody. This is single is challenging, and I was nervous about classes. So, like, I just happy. I knew half the film that was mentioned. I just like, I, anybody it really face me. I really face them. I'm like, looking forward to getting my net. Good point. I get a two and zero. Oh. There you go. We're well, always looking forward to that next uh, next and, win. I, everybody I and everybody, I am back. No need to doubt me now. <laughs> All right, you heard it from the man himself. Let's bring in the unfortunate second place finisher for the evening, Aaron Canole. And I accidentally pushed him out. My bad. There he is. Don't worry. All right, Aaron. Yep. How are you feeling, man? I know you uh, you had a rough round two. Uh, I had the lead coming out of round one. A rough round two. Do you uh, do you think it was the the questions? Do you think it was what do you, what do you think it was? Oh yeah, it it is what it is. You know, um, I know that what I do know for sure, I'm confident in, and it's just a, a simplification of the categories that I am weak in, I'm very weak in, and then everything else I'm pretty well-rounded in. And, you know, stoner comedies is one of those two categories. So it's just, you know, the unfortunateness of, like, there are a couple very obvious ones that, pe you know, most people have seen. Um, 
And then most of those were, you know, a little for like, obviously they're still bigger movies, um, mm-hmm. but just not something that I gravitate towards. So, I mean, no, no joke. It was five movies I haven't seen. So oh, well, it was just yeah. guessing the whole way through. Yeah. Stoner comedy is just, it's not something I gravitate to. And that was going to be it. You know, that is what uh, lost me in the match. I should have done better in round one, um, but that wouldn't have saved me. And then, you know, it, it is what it is. It's a loss. I don't like it. Uh, I wish I'd, I wish I'd played better, kind of like in the team, you know, I lost in the team's match, but at least I can say we played in that match. But it is what it is, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, You were able to hit your two-pointer, just weren't able to get the three and the five, like I said. Uh, Definitely pick some some numbers that uh, did not want to help you out, for sure. Um, Classics is always a hard one. Um, So, so yeah, Ryan, any any words for, for Aaron? Uh, yeah, I do have some words. I mean, yeah, look, at this point, Aaron, you clearly said best. You know what you're good at and you know what you're not good at. And trust me, the best of us always have those slip-ups. I mean, there's that one game we think we're on top, but it's not until after maybe the first two or three questions we go, do I even know anything? Am I even, <laughs> am I even good at this? Should I rewatch? Should I just start re-questioning what I like in movies now? <laughs> <laughs> But don't worry, you'll be able to bounce back real quickly. And any one thing I do appreciate about TMG trivia is that even though you get knocked back a little bit, it doesn't mean you're going to be off the horse for too long. There's always another competitor. Or there's always another opportunity to get right back in the ring. That's exactly right. And we are trying to build up records as quickly as possible. We're as of right now, we're all alternating. If I can get these words out, we're alternating uh, teams and singles every other Tuesday. Uh, we're going to maybe try to uh, see if we can get it to uh, a singles match and a team's match every week. So uh, hopefully we can provide that for you guys, get more, the more matches, the better. Um, and hopefully we'll see you back in soon, Aaron. Thanks Absolutely. for playing. Good game, Chris. All right. We're back to the desk with Ryan. Any closing words? Well, one thing's for sure, you guys here at TMG are definitely not playing. Having played in the team's matches for this little bit for it, in the division so far, I know 100% you guys are not holding back on these questions. It's clear that you are coming with questions that with so much range and variety that it, it's even going to question the best trivia player, and that's good. Always keep challenging yourself. Always keep realizing if it's a movie you haven't seen or if it's just something to where, huh, maybe I need to look back up. Maybe I need to look at an actor all over again. You know, as long as most people who unfortunately come out on the losing end, as long as they see this as a stepping stone to get better, you know, strengthen themselves, you know, don't try to keep yourself in the mud for too long. That's mainly what I can say, because I'll be honest, the moment I have to start defending my belt, I'm going to be terrified what the kind of question that's going to be directed towards me. So trust me, everybody out there, don't let this intimidate you. If you want to play trivia, hit up the admins, hit up the people in charge, you know, message the message, the Facebook trivia page. Really, if you want, because you're never going to know how good you are until you actually give it a shot. That's right. And we have some excellent players. Uh, and like Ryan said, I hope uh, I hope both players are able to take anything they learn from this match uh, and use it in the future for sure. Uh, that's you know every, that's that's what it's all about at TMG Trivia, all about having fun uh, while also staying competitive. So for our competitors tonight, Chris Movie Diaz, Aaron Canole, I have been your host Kevin Poss with my co-host the champ Ryan Payne. Have a good night, and we'll see you next time.